Welcome, everybody. It's time again for the only show that takes a look at the whole sales pipeline. So grab your board, jump in the water, and catch a wave. It's time to bring Matt Hines from Hines Marketing. Hey, Matt. How we do, Paul? I'm doing good here. We're, what part of the sales pipeline are we going to explore today? Well, you know, the last couple of weeks here uh, to start Q3, we've uh, really kind of explored just reviewing your pipeline and making sure you've got the right fundamentals in place, uh, especially as you start the new month, new quarter, and ensure that you're on the right track. And I couldn't think of a better guest to sort of continue that conversation in terms of reviewing what's working, making sure that your reps and your team are performing optimally, uh, and uh, just providing an opportunity for basically real-time and ongoing feedback and improvement. Uh, then our guest today, Steve Richard, who is the uh, founder of Voresight and is the chief revenue officer of Exec Vision. Steve, thanks very much for joining us today. Matt, thank you so much. This is the time of year to chop the dead wood out of your pipeline. That's what we're working on over here. It's funny. We uh, we use the term sometimes internally. You got to call the herd, uh, and uh, yeah, you got to. I mean, it, and it's it's important to make sure that you are doing that on a regular basis, and in some cases, doing that early and often. Last week, we were talking about on the show. We were talking about uh, how to make sure that you are evaluating efficacy of your reps and identifying the early warning signs that they're not working out, so you don't wait until the end of a month or end of a quarter. You know, how important is it for you just to jump right in on, you know, to, to look for early warning signs and use that as an indicator of whether someone's going to make it or not? You're going to be in big trouble if you don't because there's um, an ability in our industry of sales to burn lots and lots of calories on total wasted opportunities that have very low probability of ever closing. And you see that in, you know, all too many sales organizations, especially. Uh, evangelical sales forces or somebody who's selling some kind of a product that's a better mousetrap solution that where um, we got to figure out really quickly who are the who are the real buyers and, and who are the pretenders and the tire kickers and separate those two absolutely very excited today to have steve richard on sales pipeline radio not only is he a great guy he's got a great insight i i learn something every time i hear him speak at conferences he's a mainstay on the b2b sales circuit uh but n- recently has taken over as chief revenue officer for exec vision and I, I just i've spent time on this steve and you know i've talked about it before i love this platform if you think in terms of being able to review game film of your sales reps do that in real time be able to annotate that be able to provide comments and comments commentary and analysis uh, in an online platform, that is essentially what Exec Vision is. So maybe just give people a quick sense for uh, sort of what, what, how Exec Vision helps solve this problem of, you know, not just reviewing the numbers, but identifying what reps could be doing in the field on the phone to be better. Yeah, and that's where we see the missing the missing link here, Matt. All the, there's so many sales performance improvement solutions out there. There's a huge sales tech stack, as you know, and and really they're all focused on more, more, more. Uh, there's not a lot out there focused on better. And at some point, we have to have better interactions with people. And in our viewpoint over here at Exec Vision, our big idea, if you will, is that the conversations that happen with buyers and prospects, those are a business asset. And people don't treat them like business assets the way they treat a computer or a truck as a business asset or even their, their, their data in their CRM as a business asset. So what we're helping people to do is get those business assets right inside of their CRM system, uh, which obviously is usually Salesforce, and, and make them very, very usable on a mobile app. So now all of a sudden we can do stuff with our, our, our game film, with our conversation assets that we could never do before. Talk about that from a from a standpoint of you know reviewing like sales calls. And I mean historically, this has been a total pain in the butt, right? And I don't mean to tee this up as a sales pitch for Exec Vision, but but I mean it's important to talk about just the idea of helping reps be better. I mean, we can give them scripts, we can look at their numbers, but then historically, either we have to sit on the phone with them and hope they catch a prospect live, or we get a recording of someone's phone call and it's just an MP3 file and you got to listen through that. And then you're just, and, and then there isn't really a sort of an integrated opportunity for feedback. Like to talk a little bit about the frustration of, of really helping reps at a, at a field level from a management standpoint. I mean, a lot of good managers want to spend more time directly coaching and helping their reps, but don't have the tools and opportunity to do it. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you a story from HubSpot, which was, I just heard the advertisement, one of the uh, sponsors. Um, but, but the HubSpot sales solutions is a great story. And what happens there is the sales reps all listen to their own sales calls, one per week. And this is the interesting thing, Matt. It's, it's 
you don't need to do a lot to get a huge difference. So you listen to one of your own sales calls per week, and then you share it with the manager. So the insight from HubSpot is that sales coaching and why sales coaching, we're not seeing more of it, it's a math problem for the manager. If all of the, the weight and the pressure is on the manager to do the coaching, then, you know, they've got 10 direct reports. All of a sudden, you take whatever you're gonna, time you're going to spend, even if it's 10 minutes, and you multiply it times 10, and wow, that really starts to add up. Versus if you have the reps start to take some ownership of their own development on the front end, and they can then take their calls and annotate them with key moments and tags and identify the keywords based on the transcription, now we can really isolate where are those problem areas, where are those places where we can improve. So a manager can take a quick glance at something a rep did in, in 30 or 60 seconds, and they can tell very quickly if this rep knows what they're doing and click around. So it, in sales leadership, we can't work any harder. It's mm-hmm. just not possible. We have to start working smarter. And if you look at all the things that sales leaders do anyway, like shadowing sessions and ride-alongs and, and pipeline reviews and forecasts and all the, the mechanics, the processes of sales management, sales leadership, we need to have better ways of doing those with, with more complete information. And let's face it, the information in your CRM only goes so far. But the tape don't lie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're listening to uh, we got our guest today on Sales Pipeline Radio, Steve Richard, who's the Chief Revenue Officer for Exec Vision, and I think you were in the room as well, Steve, as a couple, maybe a year, year and a half ago, when there was a uh, an AAISP. Uh, I think it was one of their frontline summits, and uh, one of these one of the presenters actually brought their sales reps up on stage and played recordings of their sales calls. Um, they had their reps in the room. They had a panel of people that were critiquing and. Providing Providing advice on those calls, and there were plenty of cringeworthy moments on those calls. And I, I remember distinctly, you know, as people are kind of there's, there's nervous laughter, and in some cases, just you know, non-nervous laughter. The audience, you know, Trish Bertuzzi, who you and I both know, you know, stood up and said, "Hey, listen, if you don't think this is going on on your sales calls, you're fooling yourself." Even <laughs> yeah. the best reps need additional coaching and i think you know in in, in the same concept that you know the best athletes the best musicians in the world still need coaches um you know this is a continual improvement kind of thing for for reps of all levels is it not yeah it it is it is and and the funny thing is the people so if you think about the performance the bell curve of performance matt and we've got a bunch of customers i'm not going to name here Mm -hmm. but what they've told us is that they're low they're low mid performers they just don't care you know, and if you think about the idea of watching your own game film, it's, it's like looking in the mirror. It, it seems strange to me that someone wouldn't want to look in the mirror and make sure that they look okay, you know? And when, when a sales rep gets over that initial, like, oh, my God, I hate, I hate how I sound on these calls. I hate hearing the sound of my voice. It, when they get over that, then they start saying, huh, I didn't know I did that before. I had no idea I did that. And there's no better teacher than, than having that happen. So as, as cringeworthy as some of those things are, it ends up being an enormous gain. And I, I got to tell you that the one, the one biggest thing, the one biggest question when we're talking to uh, prospective customers, Matt, we have this slide with all these questions about things that you're trying to answer about your market and your team and your prospects. The one that everyone goes to is, what do my best reps do differently? And you would think with, with where we are with sophistication in sales, you would think that we would have an answer. And I'll ask him to him, okay, uh, Fred, what do your best reps do differently? And he goes, honestly, I have no idea. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a real problem, and I think uh, to to be able to have that resource on a regular basis, I think about uh, for a lot of sales managers, you know, that want to spend more time on this, um, but just don't don't know how, right? And you know, I think this 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 environment provides an ongoing opportunity for managers and reps to just make it easier to do so, to do it within the platform. I mean, one of the features, again, I didn't really mean this to make this a sales pitch for the product, but I love it. It's it's just you know you've got this transcript that you can pull out as part of the you know the audio as well and you can identify keywords that are being used you can go specifically to where in the recording those keywords are used but also get a sense for from both your seller as well as from the prospective buyer what are some of the main phrases they're using that can be both instructive in a good way as well as instructive you know potentially in a coaching way as well yeah, so, the, um, and again, I, I'm really not interested in making this a pitch for all the same reasons you aren't, um, but, but I'll, I can, I'll give you some things that people can think about um, if, you know, you're not a user of Exec Vision uh, right now, if you're going to just use the old-fashioned, one-dimensional call, call recording. So one thing you can think about is what, 
are the things that I want my rep saying and what are the things that I don't want my rep saying. And we go through this exercise with all of our customers where we identify those keywords, which we then, in our product, we put on a display. So then you can tell if those words are being mentioned or if those words are not happening in conversation. Um, and, it, you know, it's a really fascinating exercise because usually people start by saying, well, it really doesn't boil down to words or phrases. It's, it's bigger than that. And I say, okay, I, I understand. Well, just talk me through it. And then they start talking about it, and you start hearing these themes, Matt, like, for instance, filler words. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, kind of, sort of, like, you know, um, one of my favorites now you hear a lot of is the double cool. Uh, cool, cool. Um, so there's these filler words like that that we all would agree that, we don't want our salespeople doing this. Another great one, of course, is asking questions. Well, it becomes really easy for us to figure out if questions are being asked. So here's another thing you can do. I encourage all of you, go back and listen to your call recordings, or even if, if you're not live on a call, you're a manager that's the second voice, have a tick sheet. And I want you to, if I want you to put a tick mark every time someone asks an open-ended question that leads with an interrogative. The interrogatives are who, what, why, when, where, how. Write those down, and I'll even throw in tell, like tell me more. Go, go write down how often you hear those words being used in the form of a question as an interrogative, and you will be shocked at how little it happens in the course of conversation. What do you think about that, Matt? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I can't. You can't stress enough how important language is, how important, uh, you know, as, as, as I now do use some of them, you know, those filler words that we often use. And just sometimes just getting practice is important. Sometimes just being aware that you do what is important. I've been shocked when I listen to uh, recordings of this radio show and I realize how many times I say um, uh, it's a real uh, – it's an eye opener, right? As, I, as Paul says, I just did it again. It's an eye opener, and it makes if the more you're aware of those things, the more you can work on it and be better. We'll be back after the break uh, with more from Steve Richard, who's the Chief Revenue Officer of Exec Coach. We will be talking a little more about uh, effective sales coaching. I want to talk about Call Camp, which is open to everybody and is absolutely amazing. Uh, I'll talk more about that and uh, a lot more with Steve. We'll be right back. Sales Pipeline. <laughs> Whether you're producing a seminar series, user's conference, lunch and learn, or exhibiting at a trade show, Validar has a solution. From capturing leads at trade shows to managing on-site registration, tracking session attendance, gathering information, and providing sponsors lead retrieval, we have a full suite of solutions for you. Since 2005, Validar has been turning corporate events and trade shows into better business. Call 888-784-2929 or visit us at Validar.com. You know, in a world where the speed of innovation and change in B2B marketing has never been greater, the only thing bigger is the need for clarity, for a blueprint, for a guide to what's really working and how to make it apply specifically to increase sales pipeline growth, velocity, and conversion. That's what you'll find in the Modern Marketer's Field Guide, something you should have in your back pocket right now. If you don't, you can download it for free at HeinzMarketing.com. That's H-E-I-N-Z Marketing.com. It encompasses the entire sales and marketing pipeline, but in quick bursts with lots of specific, actionable ideas and strategies and tactics you can put to work right away, like today. The loaded table of contents helps you narrow in and tackle a problem. Some, maybe something you're looking at right now on your desk, right in front of you as you're listening to this. It's also there as a resource that you can come back when you need something new to inspire you, to open your eyes, to give you some task or idea to do next. It's all that and more, and it's waiting for you free. The Modern Marketer's Field Guide at HeinzMarketing.com. That's H-E-I-N-Z Marketing. Dot com. All right, let's pick it up with uh, Matt Hines, right? Right after this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think Paul, you're probably putting that in there to test the software you were just telling me about. That's like, right. During, during the break, Paul was telling me that they actually have software. When we convert this program, which is live, into the podcast, they have software that actually pulls out about 75 percent of the extra words. That's right. Uh, so some guests actually probably end up having about 20 percent of their actual <laughs> talking time, given what they do. But that's really? fantastic. Yeah. No. Related to that, uh, sales pipeline radio.com if you want to check out some of our past episodes you will find those up on the site you'll get the full uh, live version of the program minus 75 percent of the extra words 
which will make it a little bit faster to listen to as well. You can get all of those at salespipelineradio.com. You can always check out our, our podcast as well, uh, available on the Google Play and iTunes network. Uh, check those out. Uh, love to have you there. We are also a proud member of the Funnel Radio Network. If you want to check out additional shows related to sales and marketing, there's some great shows available, some fantastic shows coming up. Check out FunnelRadio.com. We're very proud to be part of that group. Uh, they do some great stuff uh, for sales and marketing professionals. Coming up in the next couple of weeks, we got some great guests as well. Next week uh, on Sales Pipeline Radio, we've got Joe Chernoff, who uh, really kind of revolutionized B2B content marketing in Eloqua. If you're a fan of the HubSpot blog, he really is the architect behind what it is today and just a super smart B2B marketer. So very excited to have Joe on the program next week to talk about content marketing and its impact on B2B sales and marketing. But today, excited to have Steve Richard, who's the chief revenue officer for Exec Coach. And Steve, let's talk about Call Camp because I, I just love this concept. If any of you are football fans and you're familiar with uh, John Gruden's quarterback camp, uh, this is somewhat similar, but specifically for B2B sales, pro- sales pros. Steve, Steve, give a little overview of Call Camp for us. Matt, I, I hope that uh, ESPN doesn't shut me down with a cease and desist, but i, I, I got to say I love watching John Gruden. I love watching Merrill Hodge and um, Jaws sit there and break down game tape with the X's and O's. It's so great. So what we do in call camp is it, it's a movement, and that's the thing I want to leave you with. It's a movement of sales professionals and sales leaders that want to hear other people's sales calls understand what works and what doesn't. So um, I invite guests on the show. Actually, the, the next one, you're the guest on, so I can't wait for that in August. And everyone can register for that by going to execvision.io and clicking on Call Camp. Um, and what we do is break down, Matt, you and I are going to be breaking down inbound lead qualification calls. So if the sales line rings, what does the sales rep say? Or when there's a requested demo and the, uh, the sales development team calls the follow-up, what do they say? And I just did one with, you mentioned Trish Patuzzi before. We just did one this past week on voicemails. So what we do in the format is um, people will submit calls, so we get calls from everybody. So we'd love to have the audience listening today. If you're listening and you have a sales call recording that you want us to hear and listen to and score, you can submit it on our website. Uh, And then we will uh, break it down. And actually for the voicemail thing, we made it a contest, Matt. We gave away an Amazon Echo, so we played five different voicemails and we let the people vote on the winner and the winner was uh superior glove my friends at superior glove and there was a fascinating voicemail about uh, the last samples i sent you the fingers were too baggy uh, but, but the way she constructed this voicemail was just phenomenal and nothing that i would ever think of doing and that's what call camp's all about is is getting new things in our game that we would never come up with on our own yeah, you, I mean, you've done this. You've done a few call camps. You, you know, in the product, you've seen a lot of customers go through it. What's the reaction from sales reps when they see this? I would imagine some might be a little nervous, maybe a little defensive, uh, a little worried about what people are going to see and hear. Uh, but I imagine others are actually kind of excited about having something a little more proactive to help them out. What's been the feedback, not from sales managers, who I imagine are very excited about this, but from the reps themselves who are being impacted in many cases, uh, kind of graded and evaluated. Absolutely. Well, in, in this case, they're they're only um, they're self-selecting that, right? So they're submitting a call, and by submitting a call, they know that it can be played on on the, on air. So I think that they're really excited by it, the ones that submit. But you're right. I mean, we had a, about 625 people on the last call camp, and we got 25 voicemails. So it's still a, a small percentage. But what I think is happening over time, Matt is there is, um, you know, let's think about it. All of our personal information is available online for anyone to access at any time. Uh, the idea of privacy as we, as we knew it uh, 20 years ago is basically evaporated. And, and with that in, increased transparency in life, there's more transparency in our professional lives and in how we sell. So there, there's two kinds of people. They're the kind of people who embrace it, and they're the kind of people who, who resist it. And that's totally cool. If they want to resist it, that's fine. This is a movement of people who embrace that. This is a movement of people who says, hey, I'm going to make myself vulnerable. I'm going to put myself out there because I know I'm going to get more back in return from doing that than it's going to hurt me. Well, in many cases, it may be indicative of the reps that are actually going to be the most successful with you. Right? And I would, how, how, how much do you see a correlation between reps that embrace this kind of feedback in whatever format it comes and reps that are the most consistently successful at not only hitting their numbers but improving on their skills over time? Absolutely. 
Yeah. Cool. We're talking to Steve Richard today, who is the CRO, Chief Revenue Officer for Exec Coach. Uh, definitely encourage you to check that out. He's also been a longtime uh, member, leader in the American Association of Inside Sales Professionals. Steve, as, as we kind of finish up here a little bit, talk a little bit about the AAISP. I mean, you and I have been involved for a long time. You've been involved for, I think, longer than I have. Uh, for people that are listening, I, I feel like as big as the AAISP has gotten – I still talk to a lot of sales professionals who don't know what it is. Talk a little bit about AAISP and kind of what it means for you. Yeah, the AISP is, I mean, it, it, it means everything. I Honestly, I owe my career to it. I owe my business to it. I heard Jamie Shank say that as well, and I couldn't agree more. It, the thing that's so great about the American Association of Inside Sales Professionals is it's a family. And I think it, start, it's, it, it got that way because you're dealing with a lot of folks who, because of your, your inside sales, you don't interact as much with other inside salespeople versus when you're in the field, and there's a lot of still field against inside type of thing going on out there. So there was an opportunity for a camaraderie with the inside sales leaders to go, oh, you're experiencing this, I'm experiencing this, and, and when we get together, everybody hugs it out. Now, the funny thing is over time, what I've been experiencing being there is you're seeing more and more field sales leaders that are going to the AISP events because they're saying, you know, my field team even though they work out of home offices, 70 80% of their time is spent doing inside sales-like activities. Uh, they're doing a lot of screen sharing meetings and using dialers and things like that. So there's a, there's a real convergence of what sales will be. And, and sooner or later, it really won't be inside sales versus field. But getting back to the AISP, Larry and Bob do an amazing, amazing job of bringing in high content, high quality people, making it a true group of peers. And I can't recommend the local chapters enough. I can't recommend getting to the regional events enough. They actually have a a totally fresh format in Vegas, Matt. Did you know about Unite, what they're doing in Vegas? I just read about that, but just, yeah, give people a quick overview of what that is. Uh, it's 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 a really interesting take on on a sales conference. Very different than their other other events. They're going to have a lot more interactivity from practitioners leading sessions. They're going to have the opportunity because a lot of people in the community are saying, "I want to see the new sales technologies." Demo me. So they're going to be doing you know demo rooms and 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 having the cube of the future and just so many cool things. And of course, it's in Vegas, right? Yeah, yeah, not a not a bad draw for the location standpoint as well. Uh, yeah, before we wrap up here, just want to give everybody again that website. It's exec e x e c vision dot i o. Uh, and if you go there and click on resources, you'll get to the call camp page. Uh, I think the uh, the one we're doing, uh, Steve, is on August 9th, I believe, and you can register right on that page there as well. So uh, thanks very much, Steve, for joining us today. Tons of great information. Definitely check out uh, not only the call camp, but he's got a lot of other great resources, a learning center, past webinars available on execvision.io. Make sure you check out salespipelineradio.com for a replay of this call today, of today's episode with Steve, as well as past episodes. Every one of them is up there on the podcast as well. Google Play, iTunes Store. Make sure you join us next week and every week at 2.30 Pacific. Uh, sorry, 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific. I'll get it right one of these days, Paul. Uh, definitely join us every week live uh, on Sales Pipeline Radio as part of the Funnel Radio Network. And uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, this is Matt Hines. It's been Sales Pipeline Radio. You've been riding along, surfing the sales pipeline with Matt Hines from Hines Marketing. <laughs>